Welcome, everybody. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Mike Alferi. Here. Sonia Bragic. Absent. Jennifer Bretz. Absent. Diane Sabatoni. Here. Vince D'Augustine. Here. Jeannie Smith. Here. Paul Ward. Here. Scott Learn. Here. Tony Bompiani. Here. Also present are our student reps tonight. I want to let everybody know that we met in executive session from 5.30 till 7.05 for information, um, legal, and personnel matters. We will not be meeting after the meeting. Um, we'll go on to the mission statement. Before we do the mission statement, I want to welcome aboard our two student reps, um, Gianna Richardson, you're the president. I am. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for being here. And Jacob. Um, Riffer, you're Vice President. Yes, sir. And, and welcome aboard, both of you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Gianna, since you're the boss, do you want to do the mission statement for us? <laughs> sure thing. The Hemfield Area School District and its commitment to excellence shall engage and educate all students for personal success through a shared responsibility with the student, family, and community in a safe, secure, and nurturing environment. Thank you, Gianna. And to all you listening out there, I want to... Um, Many of you probably saw in the pandemic, uh, well, a lot of things went negative for our children. It was a bad time for them. I mean, they lost their schooling. They lost their, their entertainment at night and mingling and their prom and et cetera, et cetera. But Gianna uh, took it upon herself to get a lot of students together. And Gianna, you can maybe expound on it when you do your report. She put a video together. And um, you can tell them all about the video, but I thought it was one of the most wonderful things I ever saw. Thank you. And every person that watched it, I think, had tears in her eyes seeing it. And you build up, you cause a lot of com camaraderie, both um, from the younger students to the older and the older to the younger. You, you really, I don't know if you realize what you did, but you, you young folks did a heck of a lot with that video. <laughs> thank you. you. Really that means did. a lot to me. And we want to thank you. Um, Dr. Willicke. And we're going to actually continue to get to know a little bit more about our student reps because I have asked both Gianna and Jacob to share a little bit about themselves so we can get to know them and looking forward to working with you over this upcoming school year in your role as our student representatives. So Gianna, since you've already started, how about if we have you share a little bit about yourself? Sounds good. So I'm Gianna. I'm a senior at Hempfield this school year. Inside of school, I'm involved in student council, obviously, um, United Spartans, uh, Interact Club, Yearbook, and um, I also work with uh, the, I'm vice, uh, the Rho Kappa Honor Society in the French Honor Society, and outside of school, I work for a nonprofit called Beverly's Birthdays, where we throw birthday parties for children experiencing homelessness all throughout the city of Pittsburgh and Westmoreland County, so that's how I spend most of my free time, and um, that's about it. I'm super excited to be at these meetings and to work with the student body and you guys to um, think of creative ways to attack this school year. <laughs> A lot of creativity, absolutely. Welcome, and Jacob. Well, I'm definitely not as cool as John over here, but <laughs> um, what I do in school, I'm definitely uh, glad to be in uh, student council and serve my school. Um, I'm also joining the lacrosse team this year, so I'm happy about that. And outside of school, I play baseball and basketball and just hang with friends. That's wonderful. Well, thank you both for being here. We, we appreciate it, and as I said, look forward to working with you. Um, we can ask if you have a report at this time, just it's um, an opportunity if you have information to share, and if not, we realize it's your very first meeting and um, an opportunity just to get to know us and to um, work together. Do you have a report? We do, we do. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so what we decided for the reports this year, we're gonna split them between two things, community service and student concerns, because that's what student council is together. So the first one is community service. With limited crowds, our football game collection for charities are on hold, so we're exploring other options to support charities and organizations that will help the community. And then we will be holding a blood drive or two to split everything up this fall, so we'll keep you nice. updated on our efforts with that. And for student concerns, 
we're working to create a Google form with a quick QR code so that students can just take a picture and voice their opinions through that and it'll come straight to us. And as we move forward, we would like to continue our tradition of holding forums that um, are driven by student concern. So that's it. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. And that completes your report for this evening? Yes. yes. Thank you, thanks again. The second part of the superintendent's report this evening is to provide an update in regards to the opening of school. So today was day 12. We are um, rolling along, and I do want to share some information in regards to um, how things are going. Um, we certainly have some areas that we're very proud of accomplishments and want to recognize those and also share some of our next steps. So first, positives. I know whenever the face mask um, that uh, mandate um, was recently released um, right before the start of school and we had to go back and revise our plan. I know we as administrators, um, even school board members, if I can speak on your behalf, we're a little nervous about that mandate. I have to say we have wonderful students. Our students are following the mandate. They are wearing their face coverings from grades kindergarten through 12. And certainly we um, appreciate everyone's compliance just in keeping one another safe. And that includes our staff as well, certainly in their modeling of the expected behavior. So thank you to everyone where we were um, having some concerns. I think that proved to be an area where we do not need to worry because we certainly, again, have such wonderful students. Social distancing is also occurring with our current plan. While we've had um, very few positive cases, they've had very, very much a minimal impact, and that's because of the social distancing. So that close contact, which is defined as being within six feet for more than 15 minutes, is not occurring so that there's not a need to quarantine a large number of students, and it helps us to keep everyone at school and to keep our schools open. So for that, too, we are very appreciative of the support provided um, by our students in maintaining social distancing and for our staff in reinforcing. Transportation is another area that's going very well. I know Mr. Wismore and I, usually that first week of school, we spend a lot of time on transportation, and this year has had a very smooth start. Um, certainly, we've made a few adjustments. I know our CTC students have some additional buses that we um, added to the fleet today so that there are more um, seats available for social distancing. So we are very pleased with uh, the outcome of our efforts in planning for transportation. Very appreciative to both First Student and DMJ for their support in that regard. I also want to mention with cleaning, disinfecting, I included masks here just because that was a part of our CARES funding. We did purchase a large number of disposable masks. And again, another positive, our students are bringing their own masks and wearing them, so that is not district money that we have to utilize for um, disposable masks. So that, that again, is, is a, a huge positive. We are going through a number of supplies. Um, there's a bucket of supplies, I know, in the back of our room here that has wipes to be used for tables in the event that we need to share um, space. The, the um, cleaning supplies are located throughout our district and they are being used. That anticipated cost to the district right now, we're looking at about $20,000 a month, and that is for all nine buildings for cleaning supplies. So certainly very important and is being put to use. Our next is our cyber instruction. This is an area where there was a lot of work done over the summer. I certainly give credit to Dr. Connor, to Mrs. Christy Pollock, and to all of our cyber teachers for their work in this regard. I'm at the elementary level. I have 400 here. That's actually 451 students that are participating in our elementary cyber program. I know we meet with the teachers weekly, virtually, and where we had some teachers even in the beginning who were a little unsure what this would look like, who shared with us, they love it. Um, the enthusiasm and the sharing that's going on by our teachers and their hard work is just very much appreciated. They are providing an outstanding program for our students. Middle school, we have 193. High school, 244. And that's a lot of work for our teachers, certainly as they're working with students in an A-B manner, where they have half the students physically um, present one day and the other half the next. They're also addressing the needs of cyber students that are totally cyber at the same time, students who are never um, attending our schools at this time. So a total of 888 students in Hemfield area cyber programs from grades kindergarten through 12. And we did include figures here just to show um, what this would have cost the district had these individuals attended a cyber school outside of Hemfield. I know Dr. Bompiani has spoken in this regard numerous times. When we look at the cost of Hemfield area to educate a regular education student being at approximately $12,000, the number of students choosing Hemfield area cyber has allowed the district to use 10,700, I'm sorry, 10 million, 700,000 dollars has been maintained in our budget, budget to be utilized for our students, which is wonderful. 
And again, a lot of credit to all of our teachers for all of their hard work in supporting one another. Another exciting announcement that came out last week was free meals for all. Uh, this was something that had started in the summer and we were thrilled to learn that um, we were permitted to continue to provide free meals to any child aged 18 or younger. That includes breakfast and lunch. We've seen a slow increase in our schools. Um, it started more so with breakfast, where more children are taking advantage of breakfast, and we hope that that will continue to increase even for lunch. So certainly a great way to start the day in having a, a healthy meal. Technology, and I start with the most important part, and that is that our teachers are supporting one another. We are seeing our teachers learning and sharing and really growing in this regard, and that is certainly benefiting our, our students. Um, our students in grades 6 through 12 do have Chromebooks at this point. Our cyber students also um, have a, a Chromebook, a one-to-one -one device. We have received new teacher laptops. Those are being updated by our IT department and will be distributed here in the near future. And also all of our teachers have received their portable lesson bots and work is being done to um, install the lesson bot that will be permanently located in the classroom. So open house is a traditional event at the start of the school year, and it looked a little different this year. And I have to say, I think that there were some areas where there were welcome changes. I know I was um, hearing from some parents who said this was the first year I was able to attend open house for all of my children because they were, um, you could view them all virtually. This is one example of our fourth grade team at West Point that put together just a neat way to help parents to get to know the, the teachers a little about themselves, uh, about their curriculum, the schedules, and, and what the school day looks like. So again, we thought this was just really showing the hard work and effort of our teachers and helping our families to feel connected to school when we could not have open house as we would traditionally. Uh, second example, this is our sixth grade team at West Hemfield Middle School. They created a Google site. And again, they have um, their information organized. And what a great way for families if they need to refer back to something that was shared at the virtual open house. So we greatly appreciate all the hard work of our teachers in this regard. So as we're into day 12, I know we sometimes hear questions as to where are we as far as the school system. I know we've had to release um, a few letters in regards to a few isolated cases of students testing positive. And this is something that all of our efforts um, our plans were all put into place to reduce, but we certainly know that, um, that, that this can still occur and what happens when it does. So just sharing the website that is on the Pennsylvania Department of Education website that talks about how our district is considered within the county to be in one of three levels according to the transmission of COVID within the county. So Westmoreland County is currently considered moderate, which is the middle um, level. Um, we hope someday soon to be in the low and never to be in the substantial. But in the moderate, we can see that it is based upon the incidence, incidence rate per 100,000 residents within the last seven days here in Westmoreland County, and also based upon a percentage of positive cases. So knowing that Westmoreland County is moderate, we can see that the recommended instructional model is what we're currently doing, which is a blended learning model. The other option is a full remote learning model, which we offer for families who choose full remote, but certainly not something that's mandatory for all at this point. Just wanted to share our current figures. The website is updated every week to show where we are as a county, where, is the, where are our numbers for those um, confirmed cases. We can see um, by the data here, it, it just, and I'm not going to go into detail with the figures, but it shows that we continue to remain in that middle section which is moderate and week after week since this has started we have remained at the moderate level if we were to move to low um, PDE recommends that you give um, at least two consecutive or even three consecutive weeks before you start to change models and not make an immediate change because that could put us in a situation where we're making um, many changes quickly so what happens if we um, have a number of cases this chart is also on the Pennsylvania Department of Education website. So I've clipped to include only the moderate level at the bottom since that is where we as Westmoreland County are currently. So we can see that if we have two to four student or staff cases in the same building, there is the possibility of school needing to be closed for five to seven days. Um, the area of cleaning, this really, we, we clean on a daily basis. So that, um, to go back, many times we hear of cases when it's five days, seven days after. 
So cleaning occurs on a daily basis, not knowing if there um, are, in fact, um, individuals impacted by COVID. So we um, certainly look to the Department of Health to help us in making decisions. At this point, the very few cases that we have had here at Hemfield area were not due to spread within our school community. We were able to, in both cases, identify individuals outside of school where it was contracted and not here within our school community. So that again shows that our social distancing is working, all of our safety measures, cleaning measures, face coverings, that that's all reducing the need for quarantine and hopefully never the need to close our schools. We can see that if we have five um, or more cases, we could um, have a school closed for 14 days um, for cleaning, and again, that's uh, with the guidance of the Pennsylvania Department of Health. So just sharing information in regards to what could happen and, again, reinforcing all the positive things that are occurring. Some information on technology. Um, these are some areas where we're currently working. So the number of Chromebooks that were returned over the summer that need repairs really put us a little behind in that our IT department um, really needs to spend a lot of time with each device and making those needed repairs so that they can be um, reissued and used by students, especially at the elementary level. That's where we are currently in need of those devices. Uh, the ones that were returned do need cleaning and updates. Additional technology, so we are waiting on an order of lapel microphones that will allow our teachers to be heard even clearer as they are presenting in their Google Meets. Uh, the installation of the permanent lesson bot is something that we are awaiting some uh, wiring for that to be completed. And we are waiting also on an, an order of additional Chromebooks. But again, as I shared earlier, we do have one-to-one -one devices available for all secondary students and all cyber students, and then looking at doing some sharing among our elementary students. Professional development is an area that we are taking a close look. Dr. Connor um, will be distributing a survey to our staff, to our teachers, in order to learn of needs. It is quite possible that we will be asking for an Act 80 day in order for professional development to occur for our teachers. Now that we're two weeks in, um, to our school year, certainly there are some things that we're learning that we didn't um, know in August, and we have some teachers just really um, hitting it out of the park that could really share with some others, and we want to provide that opportunity so that we can continue to provide the best education possible. Final slide, next steps, what are we working on? We know full day kindergarten, um, that that's an area of, of great interest. We know it's an inconvenience for many of our parents to have their children in half day kindergarten. We will be issuing a survey to parents um, here in the very near future and looking at our kindergarten children who are in our cyber program to learn if there's interest in having them be a part of either half or full day kindergarten if we can maintain the social distancing and address staffing needs. So those are the areas that we're currently uh, working in that regard. Another area we know that we'll be approaching quickly, while this is already um, the completion of two weeks of school, we know the end of the nine weeks will come rather quickly and our elementary cyber parents were asked to commit to nine weeks, and we know that we're going to need to be ready to um, survey parents and have a sense of which children will be returning to brick and mortar for the second nine weeks and which families wish to continue. So we will need to adjust staffing accordingly, so that's something that we will um, begin working on here very soon as well. And we know that full reopening um, is an area of um, great interest. I know today I had an opportunity to visit one of the elementary schools and as parents were sitting in line at carpool, um, I just started to get down the line and ask them how were things going. And one of the things I heard the most was they're um, looking forward to secondary being back in, back in school every day. So we get that that, that is a goal. Um, we have to really look at it through the lens of can we continue to maintain social distancing. Um, we know that if we do have a situation and we are not, um, providing that six feet, it could increase the need of the number of individuals to be quarantined and that we may have to close our schools for a period of time. So those are all things that we're trying to balance and certainly continuously looking at our plan. I know today we came away with a couple things that we thought we need to go back and revise our reopening plan. So we most likely will be adding that to the agenda next week, but I think that shows we are monitoring and adjusting. And with that, I think that concludes my report in regards to the first 12 days of school. It's been very busy. Sure, we'll take questions. Why don't we go around the room to the board, board members for questions. Just state your name if you do have a question. Mike? Uh, um, the regard to the number in, of cyber, the, the $10 million figure, mm -hmm. that isn't something that we were able to keep in the budget. That's a number that we didn't have to go, go out of our budget to spend, right? Correct. 
Yes, thank you. Vince? I do not have a, a, a question. Great presentation. Thank you. Jeannie? I did have some questions concerning <clears throat> if we do return to full um, day kindergarten or if we return to more students in the kindergarten, how that would work. But I'll hold those till maybe next week or I'll email those to you and then maybe we can discuss them. That sounds good. Thank you. That's it. That's all I have. Scott? Thank you. No, thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Paul? Uh, just a quick question, Dr. Willick. You said that uh, the, the monthly cost is, what, $20,000 for cleaning. I'm just curious, what's the, what's the normal year? So, so what's different this year are the, the bucket of wipes, which you see very close to where you're seated over on the desk. Those buckets are located throughout our building, so they have disposable wipes that are used in between secondary classes. So every desk that is used every period of the day needs to be wiped before new st uh, an additional student comes in. So those are expenses that we didn't have in the past. I'm not sure yeah. what the actual dollar amount yeah. would be. This oh, okay. is above and beyond what we would typically spend. Okay. Yeah, this, right. that also includes the cleaning agent that you mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to remember the numbers, Mr. Wismore. The um, cleaning NC that's used on the surface. NCL number eight. Thank you. And you had started using that before th this, right? Or no? Oh, it, it's a it's a quaternary disinfectant. That's Wayne Wismar talking. To and we've used that for several, if not many, years. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Diane. Diane Sibitoni, thank you so much for the administration for all the work and this great presentation. Thank you. And Gianna and Jacob, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You're part of this board, and you know you're a big part right now because you are students. And there are a lot of students that might be listening, their parents are listening. What questions might you have for her presentation, if you have any, that might open up some eyes out there? I personally do not have any questions. I think a lot of the students were super scared to go back, and we were kind of concerned of how the every other day was going to go. but. After getting back and talking with our teachers, it's gone pretty smoothly, and we're excited to get back to normal someday. So that's it. No questions. Thank you. Jacob? Uh, I do not have any questions, but I just want to say I think we're handling this situation the best we can, and we're doing a very good job. Thank you. Thank you. And I had a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to thank the parents for this cyber school thing too. I mean, we thank the staff and, right. and the staff should be thanked. I mean, they put a lot of work in this. But if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for you parents out there that put enough faith in us and the students, enough faith in us, our staff, and our ability to come up with a cyber school like that, I mean, it, the, the work is monumental. But you had to trust us and you had to come here. And hopefully we will continue to earn your trust and we'll keep you. And hopefully you'll tell the ones that are still going to independent cyber to come back to Hempfield because they can get great education here. But the five cases, that's, if we get five cases and we get the quarantine, that's five cases in one of our buildings, in one building alone, not throughout the district, correct? So the guidance isn't very specific in regards to the time frame in between those five cases as well. So I'm not certain, and that's where really the, it, it, the information says we would rely upon the Department of Health. So I think it would depend upon the amount of spread. If we had five cases across the district, I would hope that it would, would not impact closing every building, but just one building if we were to have a high number in one building. Okay, and my last question, and I've got this from uh, parents and students, most of my grandkids. Uh, they wanna know when we're going back to normal or going back better, and I think it's written in there pretty plain that that's based on what level we're put at by the government. We're in a moderate level now, that's so correct. we have to stay this way. And we would actually want to be in the low level. So on that chart, it did have the low level and the instructional model that would be recommended would be a full opening. So we would, should be in the low level versus the moderate level. Any other questions or comments from anybody? Okay. Thanks, Bob. So the third part of my report this evening includes another student. We have Justin Finfrock, who is joining us on a Google Meet. Justin is an Eagle Scout and he has a proposal which he would like to share with us this evening in regards to some work that he would like to do at a pavilion at West Point Elementary. And Justin, I believe you are no longer on mute. And would you like to share your information with the board? They have seen, um, been provided with your written information, but this will be an opportunity for you to provide an overview. All right. 
Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my Eagle project to all of you. Um, as you know, I'm a 10th grader in Hemfield Area High School. I'm part of Troop 416 based in Greensburg. I'm a life rank. And I have all the necessary merit badges for the Eagle rank except for my Eagle project. And as you know, I would like to repair the pavilion behind West Point Elementary where I used to go to school. And Mrs. Doe, the principal there, said that she loved the idea. Um, I plan on replacing missing shingles uh, and replacing a missing wooden board in the front and then restaining over that so then they all match. And then also pressure wash and paint the storage, the uh, store, concrete storage rooms, and then it gives it a nice fresh coat. And I would also like to clean the plaque, dedication plaque in the front. And then uh, hopefully with the help of the maintenance committee or department, excuse me, I would like to replace the uh, storage room door as well because it's completely busted. And I feel like this would help because it would be a nice place where uh, people or the school could have a outdoor classroom and do different outdoor learning activities while still staying socially distant in these hard times, as well as uh, it could be utilized for other outdoor activities, like for instance, the fifth grade farewell, it could be used as some sort of, some sort of station that they could use for that. And uh, I'm planning on the project taking around two to three days on site and uh, the project itself taking place around April or May of next year. And uh, I will need a beneficiary appointed by the school board to sign, off, to sign off on the project if it is approved. And uh, also with documents, I sent a small list of extras that I would also like to complete if I acquire extra funding. And I'd like to have those items approved as well if any of them would be able to be approved. And uh, thanks again for taking the time to look over my Eagle project proposal. I look forward to hearing of your decision on my project, and I'd be happy to answer any further questions you may have. Thank you, Justin. We will ask the board if there are any questions. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Justin, we'll definitely look at this. We're Hi, on. Um, we're so happy to have our students involved in any way that they would like to be involved. And we're all very proud of you for going, doing what you're doing in Eagle Scout. That's not the easiest thing to accomplish, but especially in this day and age, too. Mm -hmm. And Megan Tomasek, I hope you're out there listening tonight, and I hope you write a good article about our two student reps and this young man, because these, these are what our students are like. And um, we're very proud of them. So we will get back to you. I'm sure you'll look at it very closely and talk to legal and... And yes. we'll be back to you. And also, our um, facilities manager has started to look at the project, so certainly we will be in touch with you as, in regards to what the district can support. And I think, as well, it's wonderful that you're interested in giving back to your community, especially your former elementary school. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Have a great Thank evening. You. Thank you. Too. And that concludes my report. Thank you for a terrific report. Do we have a hearing of citizens? We do not. Day. Student reps, you already gave your report, correct? As the year goes on, I challenge you to get involved as much as you can. Think outside the box. Get in touch with any of the board members or Dr. Wilicki or uh, Dr. Connor or other staff, and we'll try and accommodate you and keep you involved as much as we can and make it productive for you. Um, solicitor's report. Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Thank you. Board secretary's report. We have the minutes. Um, Scott, would you mind... Well, no, we're not voting on them tonight. We'll be reviewing them and voting on them uh, in two weeks. Yeah, there were four meetings last month, so there's quite a few. I know. A lot of reading. Uh, <laughs> well, we trust you. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to buildings and grounds. Paul, nothing? Uh, there's nothing. Nothing to report. Okay. Move on to educational programs. Jeannie? Thank you. <clears throat> Next week, we will be asked to approve the agreement between our school district and Geraldine Thompson for providing K-12 ELA curriculum consulting using our Title IIA federal funds. 
designated for professional development, um, that the college and the classroom dual credit agreement between Seton Hill University and Hemphill Area School District be approved for the new school year, that the professional services agreement between Hemphill School District and Catapult Learning LLC for the purpose of Title I services for the new school year be approved, that the letter of agreement between Hemfield School District and Southwestern Pennsylvania Human Services, Inc. for drug and alcohol case management, substance abuse assessment services be approved, that the transportation procedures agreement between Hemfield School District and Westmoreland County Children's Bureau to ensure educational stability of foster care youth be approved for a three-year period, 2020, through 2023, and that the addendum to the previously approved agreement between Western Pennsylvania School for the Blind and our school district in regards to COVID-19 be approved. And that concludes my report. Thanks, Jeannie. And we'll move on to personnel committee, Diane. Thank you. There will be a, a number of motions next week on personnel that they will include resignations, retirement, sick leave, and different employments. And that's it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more explicit next week. Thank I'll you. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. <laughs> and we'll move on to athletic events. Anything? Nope, I think. Is this where you want Brandon to? Yes. Uh, I'll just turn yeah, it over to Brandon. Yeah, we, before we get to that, we're not going, you're not giving the presentation tonight, though, right? No, just making a statement. Just making a statement. Okay. As Brandon comes up to the mic, um, there's been some um, things happening. Uh, in, throughout the state with the uh, judges re, uh, ruling recently. And I think it's causing some confusion as to how we have to look at this. Uh, the judge in Pittsburgh, the federal judge, uh, ruled that, you know, that it was unconstitutional for what the government has imposed on us for the 250 outside limit and the 25 limit inside. And that would give everybody a thought process out there that you know, we're going to then open up and we can just open up as well as we want to. Um, as Brandon will be talking in a minute here, he's had some communication from the PIAA. There's also a motion or a um, law that's being voted on now to allow districts to make their own decisions on how many people they put in. So it's given the public the perception, I'm sure, that we're just going to be able to open up and we can open up the doors and let's go from there. I think everybody out there has to realize that there's a lot of um, information that changes daily and uh, restrictions changing from time to time too. Uh, we are giving, given some things which Brandon will allude to here and you have to remember that we have to be concerned to keep our schools open. We have to go through contact tracing when there's an outbreak of any kind. When they do contact tracing, Department of Health wants to know how, how we're following the rules and how we're following what's going on. And everything we do to bend anything or to do anything will impact that decision as to whether we stay open or we get quarantined. Our main objective is to keep our schools open, keep them safe, keep our kids healthy, keep them educated. So with that, I'll let Brandon go ahead and um, talk about what he's... Yeah, thank you, Dr. Pompiani. Uh, just to provide a brief overview, um, you know, as Dr. Pompiani said, uh, you know, certainly there was a, a ruling today um, in federal court uh, regarding the governor's orders, uh, as well as, uh, you know, the House bill uh, that pass, passed both the House and Senate that is on the governor's desk uh, for his review as well, both of which um, would provide opportunities uh, for us to increase, uh, potentially increase uh, spectator attendance at our home events. But uh, at this point in time, uh, the communication that we've received from the PIAA uh, through the WPIL as well, um, our gathering limitations are, are still and remain at 250 for outdoor events and 25 uh, for indoor events. So while we are continuing to monitor uh, and put plans in place should things change in the future um, and uh, that we would adjust accordingly, uh, but we are also uh, 
you know, currently uh, putting plans in place to adhere to the 250 and the 25 person indoors uh, as well. So our goal is to have a press release tomorrow from the athletic office uh, that would outline how we are going to address all of our competitions, our home competitions at this point in time uh, with spectators uh, adhering to those gathering limitations. We recognize that our students have worked very hard to get to this point uh, since July. Uh, and you know they're excited to um, you know, continue to compete. We also want to provide opportunities for our parents and, and families to be able to watch them uh, compete. And, and that's, that's certainly our goal. That will remain our goal, but we want to make sure that in doing so uh, that we adhere, you know, to those guidelines. So we recognize that there are a number of, of difficult decisions that are going to have to be made, uh, but we're going to be as creative as we can uh, to maximize you know, the opportunities for, for families to watch their, um, their student athletes compete, uh, but we'll make sure that, that we follow the guidance that is given to us, uh, you know, not only from, from the PIAA, but the WPIL, um, and then we'll continue to monitor should anything change, then we will certainly adapt accordingly. Uh, so again, information uh, specific uh, to our uh, individual sports, each one is, um, and each one of our activities are treated a little bit differently with the event staff and um, the personnel that it takes to operate those events, but we're gonna try to operate uh, and maximize those, those opportunities and we'll release that information tomorrow. Thank you, Brandon. Certainly our whole administrative staff's been under the gun and working hard, working overtime, and Brandon's one that has been doing that as well. And we appreciate the job you're doing, Brandon. Thank you. And Vince, anything else on athletic? Nope. Our uh, next athletic committee meeting will be, um, I think, dependent on what, what happens this week. If, we, if there's any change, then we'll have to get together and probably update our plan. plan. Yeah. Thanks, Vince. Yep. Uh, supplementals, Paul? Um, sure. Okay, so um, there are three total motions, but two we will be looking to vote on next week. Um, but there is one that we, uh, with um, the appointment of coaches, we are looking to vote on this evening. So I make a motion that we suspend the rules. Second. Motion to suspend the rules by Paul, seconded by Jeannie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposition? That motion carries. Okay. Um, so with that, I uh, make a motion that we approve S-14-20, and it's for the approval of uh, three supplemental contracts, one for uh, field hockey, seventh, eighth grade coach, um, a football assistant varsity coach, and a soccer assistant slash JV boys coach. Is that right here? Second? Second. Second by Diane. Motion by Paul. Any questions or commentary? I, I had a question. Um, I was wondering why um, Jordan maybe wasn't approved um, on an administrative approval earlier because the season had already started and she had been our previous coach and then had returned. And I She's kind of lost two weeks, and I, I wondered if we, this is not a criticism of anybody, but I wondered if we had changed our procedures on that or what had happened. Yeah, and I'll let uh, Mr. Rapp answer that. So, you know, ideally we would have loved to have administratively approved her. Um, she actually had a, a change in her schedule um, that is just recent, so we actually are not even able to start quite yet. Um, you know, we had struggled to find a coach to fill that position up to this point. Um, Fortunately for us, her schedule, Jordan's schedule has changed, um, and so she is able now to get started. So we're moving as her, quickly as her we can. Her schedule changed two weeks ago. That, that's correct, but we, we also had some administrative um, things on, on the other side to get that ready to go with, um, with some clearances and HR paperwork and things of that nature. Do they so, have to re-get their clearances if they're returning? Uh, some, depending on... Um, which clearance that is and certifications, concussion and sudden cardiac and, and some of the paperwork. Some of that is yearly, um, some of that is not. Um, so we're, we were working through that process. So even at this point, um, you know, with, with approval tonight, uh, we'll still hope to get started later this week if we can. We're still waiting on a couple of things. So we are still able to, then to proceed as we had done in the past. So if we find somebody can start and they have all that paperwork done that you talked about, they would be able to then start I would right approach away. Dr. Willicky with that and, and, and we could move forward then if that, that scenario approaches. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, there's a board policy that permits the superintendent from for administratively approving 
prior to the next board meeting. I, I thought so, but I wanted to make sure that, that we were still doing that. Yes. So would, the, would these salaries be prorated, or are we, if, I think the fall season started August 17th, so if they did not start, would they be, would these be prorated salaries? Uh, so we'll look at it. Speaking this, of those three positions that are not volunteer, I'm sorry. Yeah, just state your name before you talk. I'm sorry, so Brandon the Rapp, knows. Uh, Director of Athletics. So we'll look at those three. Two of those positions, um, the individuals were already prior approved as volunteers. Um, so they have actually been functioning in that capacity as a volunteer since the start of the season. Um, we're just promoting them to fill those vacancies. Um, so those those individuals would not be prorated, but anybody else, you know, we would look at the length of season um, and then compensate accordingly. Gotcha. Any other questions? Jeannie, do you have a question? Well, I just wondered how we would prorate, not prorate somebody who was volunteering and now pay them for it. I, I think if they've, if they've been there the whole, the whole time, right? They've been there the entire time as a volunteer. But, but we wouldn't be paying them as a volunteer. So they would be prorated to the date they started. If we're gonna prorate one, we're gonna prorate all. So well, I think they've started already. Yeah, so what we what we they look at. <laughs> well, if they're volunteers and they have their clearances, they technically they started, they were with the team the whole time. We're just hiring them tonight. Paperwork. As salary. Yeah. But we're doing they it. were volunteers prior to tonight. So yeah. we don't pay them for that. But they were doing the same duties and responsibilities in a volunteer manner until this, this approval, which we're then making it retro. So we'll make them retro. That's, yes. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Are there questions from the board on that? Okay. What's the game the kids play where they have a chair and they have music going and they sit we'll, down? We'll, we'll have That's a what you two look like you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions or comments? <laughs> Musical chairs, that's it. I, I'm getting old, Mike. I'm Chair, sorry. Music, yeah. Just um, point of order here, a point of um, uh, understanding. We called for a, a um, suspension of the rules because this is a non voting meeting usually. And our motions are put out for the public to see long in advance of the meeting so they can look at these and discern and maybe have questions sent to us. And since we didn't have the opportunity to provide it to the public and we needed these coaches to be approved tonight, that's why we suspended the rules to vote on this. Um, so any other comments? Are, okay. are you just doing S1420 or are you going down just doing them individually? No, just S1420. The others are not being uh, voted on tonight. So the volunteer would have to wait then? If, if the, the S1620 is, a, is tennis, they would have to wait till next week? Do we, we don't want them to do that? Uh, I, I thought we just, do we want to approve them this evening? Well, let's, let's take this let's one. Take this one let's yeah. take okay. this one and get this off the sure. floor. Sorry. And then we can discuss whether the other two need to be. So any other questions on this motion, S1420? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposition to the motion? That motion carries. So, Vince, your question is you want to know whether we should be... Well, I mean, if this... If we need a tennis coach right now. Yeah, I'm asking if we need her. Okay. Are they having their season right now? Oops. I would just I think really that we would do it suspend, now. Just do it now. From Okay, are we we going to just do well, the uh, tennis coach then? Hockey's <coughs> not playing right now, is it? Hockey, is hockey occurring right now as well? I think they're. Okay, well, why don't why don't we just go ahead and suspend the rules on the two motions? Go ahead. Good. All right, I uh, make a motion that we suspend the rules. Second. A motion to suspend by Paul, seconded by Mike Galferi. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. Okay, now I uh, put forth motion S-15-20, and that's for um, the recognition of a uh, coach for a club sport for um, JV hockey, and S-16-20 for uh, recognition of a volunteer coach for girls tennis, and that's, that's the motion. Motion by Paul, second by Mike. Um, my question before that, um, Mike Brungo, do we have to separate these two motions or can you make a motion for both of them? No, it's not necessary to separate. You can, you can do move both them, them together, okay. yes. So any questions on these motions? Any questions or comments? Can we prorate those as well? 
Pardon me? They're all volunteers. They're all volunteers. It's one's club, one's one's a volunteer. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Any other questions? I do have a question. Um, is our policy in effect, and how does it cover if you have a relative and you're a school board member that's going for something like this? This is a, a volunteer job. I wouldn't it's, assume. It's, it's volunteer since there's <laughs> since there's no. Um, Economics that are directly involved. So I, I don't believe anybody can vote. A conflict, correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motions carry. And that's it, Paul. That that's it. Okay. Thank you, Finance thank you. Committee. Uh, Diane. Oh, I am so sorry. Sonia left you with a little bit of work tonight. I know. Tonight. I know. Uh, next week we will have. Uh, Let's see, six motions. Uh, one is uh, there are different agreements and uh, the balance at our uh, First National Bank at Hex Collector's Report and bills that are doable, uh, due and payable and an activity statement be approved. So the last one you did, you said you'd have more information the next week. If you have any more information on these, you better do it tonight because Sonia will be back next week. I'll think about it. Okay. <laughs> and we'll move on to policy committee. Jeannie? We've been very busy on, pol on the policy committee, as you can see. And next week, we're going to be asking, we're not, we're not suspending the rules to put these on tonight, Dr. Willicke, or do you need them to be put on tonight? So I think we've already enacted some of these as they relate to COVID. So I guess we could. I mean, it might be a good idea to, to go ahead and put them on tonight. They're going They're on. They're still going to go on 30 days, right? She's, well, we just start the 30 days. Oh, you're going to do that, just that one. Right. Right, because you're saying the others have not yet had 30 days, yes. right? Which ones so are you suspending the rules for? That the um, the second 4220 that they be placed on 30 day review because the first will not have had 30 days until next right. week. So we'll just do the PO 4220? Yes. Okay, I, I move that we suspend the rules. Second. second. Motion by Jeannie, second by Diane. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. I move that we approve PO 4220, which would place nine policies on 30-day review immunization and communicable diseases, health examination screenings, telework, which is a brand new one, physical examinations, attendance and tardiness, working periods, sick leave, responsibility for student welfare, and electronic signatures, and that's a brand new one too. And uh, a lot of these are being brought about by COVID-19, but um, the new ones are and they, we need to have a policy on electronic signatures because we're doing a lot of those now and we're also using them for the special ed and the writing of the IEPs and the signatures. And the telework, we're doing a lot of telework as everyone knows. The other ones have all just been updates in wording and changes in law, just to give you that background. Okay. So um, the motion's there. Do we have, do we have a second? We approved those. Right. I motion second. by Jeannie, seconded by Vince. Any discussion or questions? I just did want to point out that there's a lot of work that goes behind, done behind the scenes. This uh, committee, I mean, everybody's interested in athletics and, and other, other committees, but this committee is the blood and guts of what we do. And um, when something like COVID comes up, Look at all these policies. There's a lot of review to it, and I thank you for the work who's doing that work because that is a lot of work. Um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. And motion carries. And then next week, we're going to be asked to put 10 policies uh, or to approve 10 policies that had already been on 30 day reviews, and they're all listed there. And we are going to be asked to approve a mindfulness club and several fundraisers, and they're all listed. 
and the community-based protection agreement between our school district and the Westmoreland County Juvenile Probation, and the handling of firearms in schools. The reports for the policies are listed below, and we're having our next meeting on Monday, October 26th at 9.30 a.m. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, Technology Committee, anything, Scott? No, nothing to report. How about uh, Central Westmore and Career and Technology Center? Uh, I, not too much. I mean, I had the opportunity to, this past Friday, we spent the morning with the new executive, uh, executive director, Jason Lucia from, uh, it, we came from Mon Valley, um, CTC. And myself and the uh, the committee chair, um, Ms. Savage from Greensburg Salem, and we had a great morning and planned. Um, just they're doing some great things, and Jason's doing a lot of things right off the right off the get go. So, um, but we do have a meeting on Wednesday night. So, that's it. Yep. Thanks, Scott. And, I, and I'm throwing accolades around, and I don't mean to be um, doing all this, but Scott has put a lot of time and effort in, in this uh, Central Career and Technology Center. It's another it's school that we're all involved in. There have been a lot of decisions having to be made. And Scott, it sounds like you have a, about a meeting or two every week, virtually or whatever, but thank you for the time. And we'll move on to Westmore on the Intermediate Unit. Jennifer's not here. I'm sure she'll have a report next time. Um, school board report. We have the COVID emergency resolution will be approved um, in two weeks, right? Not next, next week. week. Next, <clears throat> week. Next, next week. Next week. And um, anything for the good of the board from anybody? Okay, we are have. Still holding our uh, assistant, our superintendent. Are they still holding her to the yes, to the date? Yes, they've held to the original date, which okay. was that she will be here on October the fifth. Okay. I believe that's the Monday. It yes. She's cool. been submitting paperwork to HR, so yeah. I know she's um, moving into the area. So we're good. looking forward to having Dr. Reefenack join us here in the near future. So all of these reports that are at the end, we'll be giving those next week. Or do you want to go through them now? Or are you prepared now? We can do it there, next There week. are no, no information. That's um, just the headings of the different committees. Informational, yeah. I did want to ask, though, and, and Vince and Mike, on the drug awareness and prevention, um, that's one of our most important committees. I think we all agree with that. And I, we need to get this up and running again. So in case I forget, uh, talk to Jennifer, let's get the meeting held again. We can get 25 people in, or if we have to go outdoors with it, we'll go outdoors. We've got an all-star committee that the administration and you guys have put together. We need to lean on them. I mean, these people want to give their time. We need to get them involved, especially now we do need them. And I promise you as a school board, we are going to get our meetings with the township. I've already talked to George Reese, the chair of the township. And we're looking at one here in the next month or two. And so I'll be talking with him again, and we'll get our joint meetings started again because we need to, to keep moving on these. Anything else from anybody? Okay, do I have a motion for adjournment? Move to adjourn. Motion by Mike Second. Alferi, seconded by Jeannie Smith. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion.